Welcome to the world of Mark's Money Mind, coming to you from the Rocky Mountain town of Crested Butte, Colorado. I'm your host, Mark Troutman, CFP. This educational, personal finance show combines money lessons, timely topics, personal stories, and community wisdom to help listeners and viewers master their finances to enjoy a stress-free life of financial freedom. On this week's episode, we go back to Camp 5 Mid-Atlantic to catch up with my friend Kristen, where we chat about the financial independence community, in-person FI events, her decision to semi-retire, and current and future travel aspirations. Come on over to the YouTube channel to watch our live recording of this episode. Now on with the show. Well, welcome. We are once again at the Camp Fi Mid-Atlantic 2024 in Richmond, Virginia. And we got very lucky with the weather. Originally, it was supposed to rain for a couple of days, but our meteorologist here <laughs> prevented that from happening. But it is raining now, and we are wrapping up the weekend. When did we first meet? That was my question. 2022, okay. Camp Fi Rocky Mountain Week 1. Awesome. You know, I was I met a lot of people here that I've seen over the course of these events, and it feels like we've known each other for so long. Right? I it? love that. I love that too. Uh, how many campfires have you been to? This is three. Three. Okay. So which ones did you go to? Rocky Mountain twice. Yeah. And then here. Okay. But I'm doing well. You talked about Midwest was pretty great, so yeah. I signed up to do Midwest later this year. Cool. So this is the first year I'm doing three in-person five events. So it was like one the first year, two the second year, three now in the third year. We'll see what next year holds. And <laughs> which other five events have you been to? You went to Economy. Yeah, right? Economy. Can't buy. And then I just do a lot of the Choose FI St. Louis stuff. I actually run our local group. Oh, really? Tell yeah. me about that a little bit. How does that yeah. work? Well, um, we had a local group and a lot of people were in it, but it wasn't very active. Mm -hmm. So me and another gal were just like, we need to make this happen. So we just kind of took it over and started being really regular about it. And we've been doing the case studies and you know sometimes though it's just let's get together at a brewery just hang out and talk mm -hmm. we have been doing one event a month but have a little bit more time now so now i'm trying to do two events a month and it's been really great i'm very curious about your career so yeah. my okay. niece wanted to be a meteorologist she went to school for that ultimately changed her career i don't know if it was because it was difficult challenging to even uh -huh. get into the program i think that was one of the issues she might have had Tell me about how you got into that. The math and sciences are definitely challenging. Yeah, I don't have a journalism degree. I have a degree in meteorology, right. right? Growing up, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I got to college and I just picked pre-med because I don't know why. <laughs> I knew that I wouldn't be poor if I was a doctor. Right. I just didn't want to be poor. Well, you might be poor initially. <laughs> I grew up poor. I was like, I don't want to be poor. So uh, I knew I was good at math and science. I'm like, I could do this. But I wasn't really interested in it. So I got, I don't know, midway through my sophomore year and started taking anatomy and physiology. I just hated it. I wasn't interested in it at all. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking to myself, man, I got to figure this out. Because I was working two jobs, putting myself through school. I knew I needed to figure it out. So I went and met with a career counselor. You're going to laugh at this. She was like, what are your hobbies? I'm like, I don't have time for hobbies. So she's like, well, what gets you excited? And my answer was tornadoes. And that was a <laughs> very strange answer. But... She opened up this big giant book to the meteorology section, and the first thing that popped up was the broadcast meteorology program at Mississippi State University. It was probably the biggest aha moment I've ever had in my life. I thought that is so completely perfect for me. Why did I never think of this before? Well, I would think, you know, you're on TV. You can tell us a little bit about that in a moment, but I would think there's not a lot of spots for that mm -hmm. in the country. So It's a very small field. And it's probably really hard to get yeah. into it because I think that was one of her thoughts too was even if I come out with this degree am I actually yeah. going to be able to get on a TV mm -hmm. channel so tell me about that journey a little bit the program was great at the time this is in the late 90s it was the only broadcast specific program okay. so we actually had two semesters where we were getting up on the green screen in front of our peers and doing the weather so we graduated with videotapes in hand to be able to send out to these tv stations and that really helped us get a foot in the door a lot of places whereas if you just got a meteorology degree but you didn't have a tape of yourself on a green screen doing the weather it was going to be pretty challenging yeah so we had a pretty high placement rate of the people in that program and did you have to start off at the lower rung and then work your oh, way yeah. up? And... 
a lot of my peers, well, pretty much all of us started in small market TV and it is, I mean, very little money. Uh -huh. um, this was in the late nineties. I think a lot of people came out making 18, $20,000 a year. Mm -hmm. um, what happens is unfortunately some people are never able to make it out of small market TV and they eventually figure that's, they figure it out like, well, I'm never going to be able so to make a lot of good money. Career. So yeah. they change careers. So I just decided I was going to move every few years when my contract was up, see how far I could take it. I started in Huntsville, Alabama, and then I was in Louisville, and then I was in Cincinnati, and then I worked in New York City for a year. Oh, wow. And then I came to St. Louis. And once I came to St. Louis, I was kind of tired of moving. I was making decent enough money, and I just decided to kind of just be done and just stay put. Mm -hmm. So I've been now there for 17 years. 17 yeah. years, wow. Yeah, I just celebrated 28 years in the TV news business. Wow, congratulations and on I'm that. And I'm about done. <laughs> I definitely want to get to that, but we're obviously at a financial independence yeah. event and people talk about where they are in their journey. How, how did you find this community uh -huh. initially? And then also, where do you see yourself in the kind of spectrum of the journey itself? Mm -hmm. I was always frugal by necessity, right? Mm -hmm. Growing up in poverty and having to just figure stuff out. No one taught me anything. I remember being maybe a teenager, having a subscription to Money Magazine, just trying to figure stuff out. So I always paid attention and tried to make good decisions and not spend more than I had to and coupons and all the things. So I always lived kind of a lot of the FI principles, I suppose. Right. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know the nuanced stuff. I didn't know the 4% rule. I didn't know about index funds. I didn't know about expense ratios and financial advisors. And I just didn't know all of that stuff. So my very good friend, Eric Cooper, that a lot of people in the community know. Um, yeah, he's know been on the show before. Right. So I interviewed him uh, on the Fintalks cruise, talking okay. about his 72 T, yeah. which he's famous for. And, right. Yeah. So he and I, gosh, I feel like we've almost grown up together at this point. He was the very first person I met when I moved to Louisville, Kentucky in 2001. So I've known each other for 23 years. Wow. He knows way too much about me at this point. But, <laughs> but, but that goes both ways. We both have had some struggle in our past. And we bonded over that, and some of that was financial, and we both lived similar lifestyles as far as um, our finances went. Mm -hmm. So I think at some point, like many people in this community, he was Googling around and found Mr. Money Mustache, found FIRE. So he told me, I think he thought I knew, he was like, oh, the FIRE movement. I go, what is this thing? You know? <laughs> and he, I was visiting him, we were talking, and he told me about it. He gave me some book. It wasn't one of the more, I, I couldn't tell you what book it was. It wasn't one of the more well-known books, but... It introduced me to the concepts and I immediately was like, oh my gosh, this is this so connected deeply with me. And then I immediately just started going down all the rabbit holes. Yeah. Um, I read Civil Path to Wealth by J.O. Collins. I started listening to all the Choose a Five podcasts. Once I got that down, then I started listening to other podcasts and reading other books. Then I started teaching Eric some things because he's not really a podcast listener or a book reader so okay. much, right? Um, so then he retired, he starts going to in-person events. He went to his first camp by. Do you college. know which one his? I feel like Florida, maybe okay. in 2022, perhaps. Okay, okay. so might, not, not much. Not different. that long yeah. ago. And he calls me up afterwards, like, this is the best thing ever. You will absolutely love it. There was one in Colorado this summer. You should go with me. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Honestly, I don't know if I ever would have just gone by myself. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, come. And I'm like, okay. And it was like the best thing I ever did. Yeah. I just think it's amazing. You know, I see this all the time when people come here. And at this event, we had 114 participants. We had to separate into two groups mm -hmm. for the introductions. But in our room, I want to say there was probably 75% of the audience raised their hand when they when the question was asked, have you ever never been to one of these before? Is so this many your new first people. event? I was floored. Me too. And I love talking to those people towards the end of the weekend and saying, so what did you think? I think it was Gavin last night told somebody and they related this to me and he just said, this is the best time I've had in the last like five years or more. He was mm -hmm. just like, I have found my people. Right? It's amazing. It, everybody happens. has that same story. It seems. Yeah. I, that was my story. I really didn't know what to expect. I think a lot of people come in thinking we're just going to be talking about money topics all weekend. And there is some of that and you'll right. be able to get your questions answered. But what you find is that because you share the same money values with people, you find that you share a lot of other values too. Yeah. And you end up having so much in common, you didn't expect it. So you walk into the weekend and you walk out with like 60, 70 new best friends. And mm -hmm. think about how hard it is 
to make a new friend as an adult, just in general, and then how hard it is that that new friend actually has anything in common with you. Right. It's infrequent. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you and Eric had that bond initially yes. as well, too. And I think having kind of an accountability partner or somebody on this kind of, if you want to call it a path with you, it's a lot easier to do it as a team yeah. than it is solo. Yeah. Because if you do it solo, you're like, am I weird? Is this like... Right. Well, that's what's so great know? about it. Yeah, you come in and, and you leave with like 50 or 60 new best friends in one weekend and all these people that you stay in touch with and you feel like maybe a little less of a weirdo, right? Everybody's <laughs> yes. doing the same thing as you. Now you've got community, you're feeling inspired. After my very, very first camp, that year, I was able to determine my five eight, and then after my second year of in-person events, that's when I got this idea that I would start going part time. So then I did that. I'm wondering what the thing is going to be in the next year that I change. I haven't decided yet. And <laughs> when did you decide to go part time? That was pretty recent, right? Yeah, I just did that in March. I just okay. did that in March, and it's been fantastic. I was going to say, how's that going? Oh my gosh, I was a little afraid that I was going to be bored. I have not been bored for one minute. Eric told me I wasn't going to be bored. He was right. <laughs> Now, your husband, is he on the same page with you as far as all this goes? Is hmm. he, so, you know, the joke about it kind of being a cult, the whole community, yeah. like it's, you know, it's not, but he jokes that sometimes because, you know, a lot of the five people live in Longmont, Colorado. He's like, you're going to end up moving to Colorado and <laughs> living on a farm raising chickens. And I'm like, no, no. Well, maybe. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, he he doesn't understand it. He's never going to come to an in-person event, but that's probably more of because of his, he has some social anxiety. Okay. But honestly, he's just not a numbers. We are numbers people. The people mm -hmm. here are numbers people. Yeah. We are money nerds and numbers people and spreadsheet people. He is none of these things. He's a firefighter. I've always been great at math. I've always been good with money. He doesn't care about money. There was always enough. He just never really had to think about it. So we're very different in that way. So he just trusts me and I know, he knows that I know better than him on these decisions. So as a result, he just kind of defers to me and lets me handle things. Awesome. Do you ever have, you know, conversations about we're good and he says, are we good or? All the time. Does, really? All the time. Um, especially more recently now that I went part time. That was kind of not part of the plan. The plan was I was going to retire in 2026. Okay. And then um, I came up with this part time idea. And in order to make that work, he's basically now fronting some of my lifestyle. Okay. And that was never a thing. We always kept our finances completely separate. Okay. I was 100% financially independent. I didn't rely on him in any way. We kept mm -hmm. everything separate. And now I pay for like 60% of my lifestyle and he pays for 40. And he's just convinced that at the end of the month, he's going to run out of money. There's not enough money to do this. And I'm like, no, but look, here are the numbers this is the math. Well, we'll see. And I'm like, no, these are the numbers. It's going to work. Well, I don't know. And I'm like, I think it's just going to take a few months of seeing that there's enough money left in the account at the end of the month, that it's all fine. And he'll, these concepts are just very foreign to him. Yeah. yeah. And what was the decision to keep uh, finances separate? Was there a particular reason for that? Or It's hard for me to remember how we decided to do that. I think we're both divorced. And I think there was a little bit of he had a little bit more drama <laughs> with his ex with that, in that regard. So it just felt like the safer path. And it was also just easy. I mean, we both had our own finances separate for so long. It, it mm -hmm. almost was just easier to keep it separate yeah, and I, just split the bills. I think it makes a lot of sense, especially in that second relationship. Yeah. I see that very frequently. And it's going to create, well, I don't know what sort of issues it's going to create, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens moving forward? Because I did say to him recently, at what point does your money and my money become our money? Right. He's like, well, I guess when we retire. Okay. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Why do you think that would be the time frame? I mean, is it because you just need to combine it at that point? or I don't know. I, I okay. really haven't figured this out. Maybe you have some suggestions for me. Well, no, I've thought about it because, you know, my wife passed away. I have no relationships or anything going forward. But I thought if that were to occur sometime down the road, how would I handle it? I think I would want to keep things separate, but I might, yeah. we might have a, a me pot, a you pot and an hour pot. Mm. And maybe the hour pot is where there, are, there is some combination, but there is a lot of separation as well. I'm curious because I talk to people that are, you know, in second relationships or whatever. And it seems like that is very common to keep things separate, especially if there was difficulty in the prior relationship, mm -hmm. especially on the separation and, okay. and stuff. Okay. Well, like I'm glad that. to hear that I'm not abnormal in that way. And then the question is, what gets combined? How do you combine it? And like you said, if one person feels like they're carrying more of the weight, how does that work? I've actually talked to another couple here and 
one person is not working and, and the other person makes plenty for the couple. And it's kind of like, does the one person feel like they're not contributing as much? And how does that dynamic work? It doesn't sound like they need to work it out, but it is a new dynamic that they're... That's interesting. Yeah. I wish I would have talked to these people because this is a new dynamic for us too. Yeah, I won't that's, say their names, but I, I'll yeah. let you know who it is. Now right? that I'm somewhat of a dependent, you know, I've been yeah. an independent of my husband's situation as well, yeah. So it shifted the dynamic and it's creating some interesting scenarios that we're trying to work out. I think in the real world, in the non-fi world, you know, when people go back to part-time and cut their hour 60% and therefore their pay 60%, they probably dial back their lifestyle. And what, I wasn't going to do that. I mean, the whole point was having more of my time back so I could do more of the things that I enjoy. So what's the point of cutting my time back if I'm just sitting at home twiddling my thumbs? Like I want to go do more. So he's like, you get to have your cake and eat it too. I'm like, yes, this is the point. Yeah. But he's like, well, what do I get? And I'm like, well, you don't want to dial back your Well, that's work. what I was going to ask. Does he want to dial back his No, work? he doesn't want it. Okay, so he's a firefighter, and mm -hmm. he only works two days a week. He goes to work for 48 hours, yeah. and then he's home for four days. So he okay. works 10 days a month. He says he already feels like he's retired. He's like, I okay. do everything I want mm -hmm. to do when I want to do it. I don't feel like I work at all. So he doesn't want to dial back. And I'm like, well, what do you want? And... Um, we decided that was going to be a truck. Oh. <laughs> so we bought it on Friday. So I think I said, get the truck. If the truck means that I'm going to hear less about this part-time stuff, get the truck. So we and, got the truck. Yeah. So do you do things together or do things separately? Because I see a lot of posting with you traveling and so forth. Is that mm -hmm. something he's not interested in? Or? He likes a little bit um, cushier. Well, no, that's not the right word. For instance... In the last year, my dear friend Eric had a big birthday, turned 50. We decided we were going to go to Egypt. Right. Offered my husband to go, but Egypt was a little outside his comfort zone, yeah. as it is, it I think, for most people, right? I mean, it's, that's an exotic and land. the only reason it's outside of my comfort zone is because when I was in college, I was over in England for a semester, and one of my roommates, his father was a diplomat, and we were like, we're going to Egypt. He's like, you're not going to Egypt. Um, because I guess at the time there were some issues and so he would always run everything by his dad who was in the oh, state department yeah. and then we were like well we'll go to Greece then okay and then we went to Greece and then we went over to Turkey and he's like but you weren't supposed to go to Turkey oh. well, we did and it was yeah. no problem was so for whatever reason that Egypt like you can't go to Egypt is always in the back of my mind which... we did have one person drop out because of the war in Gaza because that's yeah. so close but yeah. I don't for me, I was just like, if I'm going to live my life fine, in fear, right? it was fine. Yeah, but I'm like, right. I'm not going to live my life in fear. I'm not going to not travel yeah. because, you know, no, I'm, I'm going to live my life. But it is sort of exotic. Um, a lot of people are like, wow, oh my gosh, Egypt. And my husband thought Egypt was a little out there for okay. him. So he's like, you go. And so he's great like that. If he doesn't want to go, he's happy for me to go well, and, and go do my it thing. Works, yeah. He won't be coming to any of these in-person five events, but mm -hmm. he certainly travels with me around the country and mm -hmm. to Europe. We're going to Europe this summer to celebrate my birthday. And he's going. He's going. Awesome. Yeah, well, he's that's going. That's great. Tell me about where you're going. Do you know who Rick Steves is? Yeah. I'm obsessed with Rick Steves. If there is such a thing as reincarnation, I want to come back with Rick <laughs> Steves. I love that guy. I've always wanted to do a Rick Steves tour, so it's one of his tours. We fly into Salzburg and work our way west through the Alps over two weeks, nice. hitting five countries, wow. finishing in Chamonix, France. So I'm very excited. Love the mountains in the summer. Love, love. Great weather. You know, you mm -hmm. live in the mountains. It's mm -hmm. the same kind of deal yeah, over there. Right. Lots of sunshine, yeah, low humidity, yeah. great temperatures. It's like perfect. Yeah. And when is this? Basically the first two weeks of July. Oh, coming up. Yep. Awesome. Very cool. I know. I'm so excited. Now, we <laughs> talked about one other time. You were saying that, well, when I retire or I'm done, I would like to start maybe a travel company or I something know. like that. Tell me about that. I'm still thinking about that. Desire. Well, you know, we've got... Amberly doing the FinTalks cruises, right. right? There are some people that, like you go with some people and you guys do some cruises. I don't know. There's not really anybody putting together land tours around the world, as best I can tell, for mm -hmm. five people. I no, just want to travel right. with my five friends. Right. So I'm like, well, I'm a planner. I love mm -hmm. to plan trips. And mm -hmm. People have said to me so many times over the years, you should be a travel agent. I hate sales. I'm never going to be a travel agent. But the idea of being able to plan a trip that I want to go on and then bring my people on that trip 
That idea just sounds really great to me. Well, I would go. You would go? Yeah. <laughs> and then the way I look at it is if by planning it, I get to go for free yeah. and that'll allow me to travel mm -hmm. for more. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a win-win. Yeah. So I've been, I'm going to, I'm going to be exploring it. It's still in my okay. mind. I'm still looking Good. to do I'm it. Push you on. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> maybe in the next year or something, for instance, our trip that we did to Egypt, I would like to do a similar group travel, like small mm -hmm. group travel to Morocco. Like that's one that right. I'm thinking about. Okay. Um, is that too exotic too? No, Would so you know, for me, Bali was exotic, okay, and I right. went, yeah. and it was fine. Okay. And now I've got—I think I've gotten over yeah. the—I don't want to say anxiety, but the discomfort of yeah. going to areas that I thought were outside my comfort zone. But I find out it's—it's it's not the best, especially if someone's helping me out. Right. So, so I like, think I want to do like a mid-range thing, though. I yeah. know you've been going on some kind of high-end cruises. Yeah. So there's a group doing that. There's a group doing sort of lower-end yeah. cruises. So the I'm thinking mid-range land-based because yeah, like there's yeah. not really anybody doing that. Yeah, I agree. And then you can let people know on your show when we put a group together. Yeah. See if anybody wants to come with. Absolutely. <laughs> well, and the, you know, the Bali trip was, Amy did such a good job of organizing it, keeping us informed, helping us through all the, the minute details that you don't even think about, like how to get a SIM card, how to make sure you get the right visa if you need it which even airlines to take and mm -hmm. so forth. So having somebody organize stuff makes it the easy button. And there are certain people that are really good at that and they yeah. love that. And I know that I'm one of those people. So mm -hmm. I'm like, this would be perfect for me to do. So you're going to go to Bali with us on you? I have verbally committed for Bali for 2025. Ooh, awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm planning on going again. Yeah. Well, Hopefully I can get a year. ticket. I just well, have to know when it's going to open up and try to get in there before it sells out. <laughs> clock. Exactly. It's all out in two hours this year. <laughs> so that's good. So maybe we will meet there again. Yeah. Where else do you think our paths will cross next? Well, oh, gosh. Because I know it's going to be... Oh, did you have to organize your own birthday trip? Well, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. But I love doing that, though. Okay. It brings me joy. However... It is a small, it's a Rick Steves tour. I mean, it's oh, small okay. group travel. So, so they plan most of it. It's an interesting one because the majority of his tours are fully planned out, like all inclusive, right? right? This is a, he has a few, a handful of tours that he calls my way tours, okay. where the important logistical stuff is taken care of for you by them. But your day to day is planned by you, which I feel like is perfect for me. Yeah. Because I like to plan my day to day and choose my more detailed stuff. So they got us in the hotels. We ride together from city to city. But every morning when you wake up, what you do in that city is kind of on you. Do you arrange your own flights? Yes. Over and back? Yeah. Well, of course, we like that because you use yes. points. Yeah. And of course, you know, I'm happy to help the other people that are going, right. my friends. Oh, here's a great points option yeah. for you, mm -hmm. you know. How many people are going? I think the tour is 25. No, but of my friends, yeah. let me think. Five. Oh, cool. Yeah. Eric. Our friend Tanya, who's a member of the yeah. uh, FI community. Mm -hmm. I didn't know she was um, going. Yeah, she's very going. Cool. My husband and my brother. Awesome. I'm very excited. So I like this idea, this My Way Tour, because look, I've been very kind of proud of myself in recent years for doing a lot of independent travel where there's not, it's not a tour. And I do everything on my own and plan it to death, really, because I don't want anything to go wrong. Mm -hmm. And things have gone wrong. Things from, I, was, I went to Venice and it was a little small family mom and pop hotel and they canceled on me the week before and there was nothing I could do about it. And I honestly think it was just like maybe a friend just decided to come yeah. in for the weekend. I had like, that once and yeah. it was for my daughter's graduation. I'm like, are you serious? You yeah, they just bounced me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they didn't have a good reason. They just yeah. bounced me. And then I had another situation where, I don't know how this happened, but I booked a tour and somehow I booked it for the following year. I still don't know how that would happen. I had some trouble with a rental car. I'm like, oh my gosh, this stuff is killing me. Yeah. So the idea that somebody else would handle the big stuff, the hotel, mm -hmm. something went wrong. And then I can just deal with the day-to-day -day of what we're doing, which to me is that's the important stuff. And that's kind of what, you know, you think about the model that Amberly's doing with the cruise. That's effectively what she's doing. A travel agent is doing all the booking. The cruise line is doing the feeding and the housing mm -hmm. and all that, but she's organizing the other parts, which is the get togethers on the ship. Yeah. You know, coordinating everyone, curbing everyone, I guess yeah. you'd say. And that one's big. So I think this year she's looking at maybe 100 people or something like that. So kind of crazy. I bet it sells out. I know two people last night that I spoke to signed up while we were talking. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> 
You heard it here. If you want to go, you better get on that. I'm so excited yeah. that you are going to, um, that you're supportive in this idea that I have of doing these trips because. Well, you know, when I talk to people and I see people light up about something. Oh, I lit up. You know, I love oh, that. Yeah. I love that you noticed yeah. that. And, okay. well, you know, you want to talk about it, you want to explore it yeah. and so forth. And I think it would be great. I mean, I think there's plenty of people, you know, we talk about in the FI community, everyone thinks that it's all about deprivation and not spending. But I think a couple of things I've noticed, and I'd be curious your thoughts on this too is that it seems like the community has evolved from save, save, save to a point where you're just going to have enough to exist and then you're fine mm -hmm. versus, well, let me save a good amount, enjoy my life along the way. And I love hearing about everyone's trips and travels and doing it together, for instance, and then getting to a point where, boy, I really saved more than I thought I would because mm -hmm. that tends to be a common theme because you're kind of an over-optimizer or we are as a community. Mm -hmm. And then you get to a point where, well, I actually have more money than I thought. Right. Maybe I should start spending it. The book died with zero kind of uh -huh. helped propel that. And so I think there was, you know, at first when we did, well, we did this one cruise to Alaska, which was in this more kind of retirement group that is similar to the five community, but it's not really five based or anything. And it was a relatively expensive one. And at first we were just like, oh, there's a few of us that want to do it. Let's just do it. And let's put it out there and see if anyone wants to join us. There's 50 people that signed up. Oh, wow. Yeah. I had no idea you had that many. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I guess there's an appetite there's for clearly this. <laughs> demand. There's clearly demand. It does feel like so much of the community now, though, is pivoting to this more like slow five thing. Like definitely yes. enjoy your life along the way go do the things and spend on the things that make you happy and you just get there when you get there because honestly tomorrow's not guaranteed part of the reason i pivoted to part-time recently well one of them is something, something you just alluded to i realized I, we were oversaved and we didn't need mm -hmm. to save that much anymore right. so we dialed back our saving to allow this to happen but also i lost a friend close to my age to colon cancer and i'm like yeah. oh my gosh tomorrow is not guaranteed right. I'm saving for the future, which is great, but what if there isn't one? Like, right. let's let's enjoy now. Let's really enjoy now. And that's why, you know, my daughter and I did a presentation back and I think it was... was it, it was 2022. It was the one that was... Yeah. yeah. And we kind of talk about that, you know, her losing her mom, me losing my wife. Um, we're so pleased that we, we kind of did the slow fi coast fi even though we didn't know we were doing mm -hmm. that. And we were saving a lot, but we were still enjoying our lives. By the way, I do think that's why I connected with you guys so well in 2022, because I lost my mom to cancer when I was 19. Oh. How old was your daughter when your wife died? See? Yeah. yeah. I remember talking to you guys a little bit about that then, because I was like, hmm, feel Yeah, bad. and I think these kind of inflection points, I noticed a number of people, like Samantha in her talk, she had a, a life event, her father passed away, and it, it gives you a reason to think, wow, life isn't infinite, and right. maybe we should do, and I don't know if that was the total inspiration, but that certainly played a part. And I do see a lot of people that kind of, it clicks for them. There's something, like like you said, a dear friend passes away or something in their life is a little bit of that trigger, like mm, maybe this you know deprivation of roots is not the best way. And then what I like now is that Carl Jensen's out there and uh, Brandon and Matt Fiennes is out there saying, we did it too fast. We we should have enjoyed the ride. So I think And they're is, also saying we need to spend more. Spend yeah. more, spend more, enjoy. Yeah. And yeah. do you find that challenging? Because that was a challenge for me, was actually, okay, I, now that I, we have this money, but actually going to spend it was a challenge. And I had some workarounds that a friend suggested, but I don't have that problem. No. <laughs> Which no, is interesting because no. you said you were kind of a saver and Yeah, um, out of necessity. But now that I see the numbers and okay. I'm like, I know we're okay and I know as long as we, you know, stay within a certain range that we're fine, okay. I don't worry about it. So it's a confidence factor in that you've mapped mm -hmm. it out correctly. Yeah. yeah. So that's kinda of like I said, how we were able to do this part time thing. And I gotta tell you, like it's this community that inspires us to make these changes in our life, yeah. I think. Because in the real world, you know, friends and family that don't aren't part of this community would think these things are maybe a little odd. I mean, it's certainly a little countercultural. Right. Um, here's how it happened. I've been doing TV news for 28 years, and someone said to me, is that going to be kind of hard to go from being, you know, meteorologist, Kristen, you know, for that long to, like, just not overnight? Have you ever considered maybe ramping down slowly? I was like, wow, no, I hadn't thought of that at all. Mm -hmm. That makes so much sense, right? And then I looked at what our current numbers were, projected forward to 2028, which is the year my husband wants to retire, 
And, and does all, he have a pension or anything like that? Yes, it's that, not. Uh, it's not a traditional pension. I, I don't. I actually don't know what his plan is called. Yeah. It kind of looks like a four hundred one k. But it helps a little bit. But but this company or the city puts in eleven percent of his pay. Does he get social security? No, he does not. See, that's the one thing that he a does lot of not. Public employees. They put in eleven percent. He puts in seven. He can't change it. Right. So that's eighteen percent of his paycheck that's been going in for twenty five years. And then he mm -hmm. also has a four fifty seven in deferred comp. So I, it's very helpful. These, yeah. His his portion of the net yeah. worth is. And he utilizes the 457. And he will. We yeah. haven't. He's not retired yet. No, but, but oh, I mean, oh, yeah. No, we've been, yeah, yeah, we've been maxing that out. Yeah, we've been maxing that out. I told him to max that out. Yeah. So he's. I, honestly, if I. <laughs> If I wasn't in his life, I feel like he'd be the person who had like a huge chunk of change just sitting in a checking account, not making yeah. any money. Mm -hmm. So I've helped him make these changes over the years. It's got us to where we are. But I math forward. Okay. He wants to retire in 2028. If we never contributed another dollar to these accounts, would we get to where we need to be? And the answer was yes. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, shoot. Wait, I can start dialing back. Yeah. So, so are you here. in that situation where you're not really touching what you've saved, but you're just living on what you're making kind of thing? What we did is we dropped back what he was contributing to the deferred comp. Okay. We just brought that number way, way down because mm -hmm. there, there's a match. So we dropped it down to the match as opposed to maxing it out. Right. And that difference is what's helping to support my part-time idness. So you've... Cut back your hours. Your husband has this plan to retire in 2028, you said. And are there any plans after that? What is the life after he decides to retire? You're obviously during this interim period, mm -hmm. which is what, approximately four years. You're going to probably travel mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. come to these events. Hopefully mm -hmm. our paths will cross again yep. a number of times. Soon, yes. But what about that post time period where he decides to actually yeah. throw in the towel? He actually surprised me with this. We've in recent years done a lot of travel to Europe and neither of us are from St. Louis. So we don't have any necessary strong ties there family wise. We ended up in St. Louis there because that's where our jobs are. We didn't grow up there. As we travel, there are certain places that grab us a little bit more than others. And Spain was one of those, which is so funny because Spain wasn't even on my list. He just was like, I had picked our first place we went to go to Europe, wanted to go to Italy. So the next time we went to Europe, I was like, where do you want to go? He's like, I don't know, Spain. We loved it so much. And he said to me, which you have to understand, my husband doesn't get excited about a lot. Right. He, you know, he, he's not a big idea guy, you know, and he said to me, man, I, I'd like to live here someday. I couldn't even believe it. I still can't believe it. And what part of Spain were you visiting? And is that the same part you were thinking about? Or We visited Barcelona, Madrid, Granada, and Seville. He loved Seville. Love, love, loved. I loved Is that on the coast? I don't know where Seville's Seville is. a little inland. It's okay. south. It's, okay. it's near the south coast, but it's mm -hmm. inland. I've also... In recent years, since that first conversation about it, done a ton of research, you know, on the visas and on different expat um, things that would be important to the American expat, right? You'll laugh at me for this, but, you know, I'm a weather nerd, too. I'm a money nerd, a numbers nerd, and a weather <laughs> nerd. So I have always wanted to live somewhere like Southern California weather. Okay. But that's expensive. Right. So I literally started researching climate types. What other places in the world have the same climate as Southern California? And it's the Southern Mediterranean. I mean, there's a few other places around the world, but a lot of them in the Southern Met. So then we knew we liked Spain. So then we started looking at where in Spain, and then you start looking at cost of living and so many other things that would be important to the expat. And the three places that have risen to the top of my research have been Malaga, Alicante, and Valencia. I have not been to any of them. Love the places I visited before. Seville is inland. It'll be 120 degrees in the summer. I'm not interested in that. Right. So we knew we wanted to be on the coast. Mm -hmm. Loved Barcelona, but Barcelona is a huge international popular tourist destination. Right. It's a bit more expensive. So if we've narrowed it down to those three, we need to do a scouting trip. But that's the plan. Now the question becomes... Sounds like you could do a scouting trip and maybe plan it for other people and get it. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for that inspiration. I don't know if I want to just move there and base myself in one of those cities and then just travel all over Europe. Or do we want to go live in one city in Spain for three months and then maybe go live in another city mm -hmm. in Spain for three months and then just kind of keep going? I don't know. I think we're just going to have to feel it out after we get over there. Yeah. And what about, I hear Portugal a lot. Portugal would be a close number two if Spain didn't work out for some reason. Okay. And why is it that Portugal seems to always 
It's kind of the same the reason staff. Spain does. It has that amazing weather, amazing mm -hmm. cost of living, great history. For me, the reason Spain beats Portugal, now, okay, in all fairness, I haven't been to Portugal, but on paper, yeah. to me, right. the reason Spain wins is for the language, because I speak some Spanish. Yeah, I was going to ask that. And I feel like I'd be able to get it back near fluently pretty quickly oh, once I immerse oh, myself. Okay. And I also really prefer Spanish food, and I don't know Portuguese is pretty seafood heavy, and I'm not okay. a seafood eater. Okay. Sounds, I know that sounds very picky. No, 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 but, but I mean, I keep, you know, you hear people, oh, we're moving to Portugal. Like, yeah. What is up with Portugal? <laughs> International Living Magazine, if anybody's interested in moving abroad and doing the whole geo arbitrage thing, they've been a great subscription for me for probably the last decade. International Living. International Living, okay. yeah. And every year, they look at the best countries in the world for American expats, and they rank them by all sorts of different categories. Um, Portugal, I think maybe last year was number one. Um, this year it might be Costa Rica. Is it because of cost of living? Is it because it's of health? Everything. They look at all those different categories. Yeah. They look at how I easy it is. I was just wondering what tip the scale kind of thing. They get high rankings in almost all of them, but they look at cost of living. They look at, you know, are they welcoming to the American expat? Right. They look at crime and healthcare and weather, you name it. It looks at all these different mm -hmm. things. And so let's go back to Spain then. Is there any visa requirement? Some places say, oh, you have to buy a house mm -hmm. or you have to spend something mm -hmm. or start a business or to have a lengthy stay. I will obviously dig more into the details of this as we get closer, but, but my understanding as of right now, there's different visa types. You've heard of nomad visas, right. golden visas where you buy property. We don't want to buy property. So the one that I'm looking at that I've heard about is called a non-lucrative visa. And it's basically their retirement visa. Okay. So you need to be able to prove that you have enough money to support, to support yourself and not leech off their system, basically. Right. But I also understand it's a lot of red tape, a lot of hoops to jump through. Probably takes like a year. And we're definitely going to have to hire an attorney okay. um, to help us get through some of that. And is that a... For only a certain period, you said? Or? I think it gets us through like a year, but then we can re-up it. Once you get it, it makes it easier. And okay. Eventually, you can get more permanent citizenship down the road. But these are some things I still need to learn more details on as we get closer. But I do know that we'll need to hire an immigration attorney to probably make that a little bit easier. And have any idea what an immigration attorney No clue. No okay. clue. Just curious. <laughs> And it sounds like you'd want to rent in that box. Yes. Yeah, I, I think, think that's we're wise. Yeah. renters for life after we sell our current home. Really? Yeah. Okay. And so that brings me to another question, because I've thought about this myself. I've owned a home pretty much always. Most of our lives, we've owned a home, we've rented it in the interim. Um, I've thought about selling the house and maybe becoming a renter, or I don't think I could go 100% nomadic. That's just not my thing. I'd have to have a home base somewhere. But do you find, will you have to downsize a lot of stuff? I mean, have you thought about that? Or We don't have a huge house now. We didn't have a bunch of kids and had a lot of stuff. But I do recognize that we're going to have to sell and get rid of a lot of stuff. Yeah. Maybe end up with just a little like 10 by 10 storage room somewhere okay. with the most important stuff. You do know? you find that? So for me, it's just that mental hurdle of like, ah, I just don't want to deal with it. It's going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be, it's gonna be challenging. I have, have no up. idea. Honestly, though, I like purging. Uh -huh. I mean, it still is challenging and, and hard to do, but I like the sense of, of just getting rid of stuff and decluttering. Yeah. But it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, we're going to have to get rid of a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's my... Because we owned um, a second home at one point, and mm -hmm. when my wife was uh, sick, we sold that house. So I basically just took everything and put it in the garage for the most part, and it's still there. Exactly. Two years later. Yeah, it's going it's <laughs> to be challenging. Three years later now. So I'm like... Every time I walk in the garage, I'm just like, how am I going to deal with this? Mm -hmm. And you think it's like, oh, it has some value. The reality is it doesn't. And I, I just, I heard somebody, I think last night say they hired, oh, it was on the podcast panel, the second one I was on. And he said they hired somebody to come in and do it for them. And they took probably a big cut. Oh, wow. And I was like, I love that. Because yeah. one of my thoughts was this doesn't have a lot of value. I mean, it probably has some value. But I was like, I just want to like get it out the door. I don't want it all in the landfill. I don't want to just bring a dumpster and throw stuff that someone could use. And I thought, well, if I could just do it as 
all proceeds go to my charity of choice or Perfect. something like that. And of course, I would want them to give me the money and then I'll do the donation to get the tax deduction. <laughs> but that was one thing I thought of. And I live in a very small town, but there's got to be somebody that would be like, well, if you're willing to let me come in and take everything and I'll take 30%, you can take whatever you want. I think that's a great <laughs> idea. Get it done. <laughs> Anything to make it easier. Yeah. So. But it's also sorting through all that stuff, though, and making sure you're holding on to the stuff that has that sentimental value. Yeah, and I've heard people say, take pictures of things and maybe create a, a memory book or something like that, and maybe a few things that speak to you or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, I do have difficulty like getting rid of things sometimes just because you're like, well, I might need that. My dad used to have a roll of rubber bands and stuff. Oh my you know? He was like from, well, his parents grew up in depression, so it was like, and then when he passed away, I'm looking in his desk drawer, and there's like rubber bands and boxes <laughs> of uh, paper clips. And I need those like, 800 paper clips. Yeah, yeah. it's like, well, I'm going to throw them away. I'm probably going to They're useful. Yeah, point. exactly. So My dad was the same way. I had the same kind of somewhat of a mental challenge when it comes to that stuff. So. What that did to me, because my dad was the same way, there was so much stuff everywhere that he wouldn't let go of. It made me the opposite. I just wanted to declutter and just throw stuff yeah. away. Yeah. Well, I keep thinking that if I get a new place, I will shop in my own house for the new place. Oh, good call. And then just be like, well, I didn't bring this over, so mm -hmm. obviously it's gone. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how to do that before I get a new place. That's a challenge. But And I don't want to necessarily have a storage facility that it ends up just stuff in the storage facility. But I know when you're traveling overseas, obviously, you can only bring... Yeah, a very couple of suitcases. Yeah. That's going to be an interesting challenge as well. <laughs> well, that's my next thing. So <laughs> I was very interested in talking to uh, Samantha and Chris about how, and Keith really, about paring down into a small bag. Because I'm going to be on the road for, it looks like, two or three months at the end of the year. And I'm like, Good how am I going to do this? I have bag? no idea how they do that. I'm thinking about this trip this summer. Rick Steves won't let you check back. Oh, yeah. You really? have to have a carry on and a backpack at most. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out how on earth, because with the toiletries and everything. Yeah. Well, those, and that uh, was one of the comments or uh, conversations we had last night was, and even in places like Southeast Asia and so forth, they're like, you know, they do sell that stuff. Right? I so, know. But what if they don't have my brand? Yeah. Well, that is, ridiculous. I mean, my daughter's the same way. <laughs> so when we go on this, the Alaska cruise and this one, she's coming on a one with us this summer to the Mediterranean and she's already got her list and she's like, well, I'm going to have this bag and this bag. I'm like, jeez. Oh, um, it's bring... going to be challenging. Yeah. We'll figure it out. I have faith in us, Mark. Yeah. So where are our paths going to cross again? That's I know. Let me think. Well, you know, you inspired me to check out Camp Find Midwest. I know you're a yeah. big fan, but you're not going to be at that one in September. No, in September. Oh, I'll be in the Mediterranean. <laughs> Darn. <Sorry. laughs> oh, we're ending in Venice though. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Have you been there? No. I have to tell you, I, I've heard so many people say, oh, it's so over tourist. We're staying in Marana. Is okay. it the island next to Venice yeah. or whatever? So yeah. Because, of course, there's the Hyatt uh, property. Oh, there. okay. But you'll obviously spend some time in on the main oh, yeah, section. Yeah. yeah. We went in, I think, having heard all of these things about how over touristed and, you know, all of those things. Yeah. And we were just pleasantly surprised. We loved okay. it so very much. Any and tips on how to deal with that? It wasn't an issue. Other than booking an Airbnb that cancels yeah. on your Oh my class. gosh, that was the worst. <laughs> but it really wasn't an issue. We Everybody's, oh, you get lost all the time. We found that our, you know, Google Maps app worked perfectly okay. fine to walk around. And mm -hmm. we did you didn't, download the map ahead of time or yeah, something like that? Yeah, and we didn't have, like everybody's got like, smells. Maybe in peak summer heat, but we weren't yeah. there. Yeah, when we, we, were, we yeah. were there. We were there late September, early okay. October, and it was yeah. great. Now, yes, it's crowded, don't get me wrong, yeah. but it, we found it to be very manageable and absolutely loved it. Pleasantly yeah. surprised. I think we're going to be there the weekend of Camp Fire Midwest. Okay. I'll be there September, I think, 6th yeah. or 5th or 6th. Well, I'm not able to do the Bali thing this year because, you know, in the TV news business, there are certain months of the year we can't take off because it's like right. ratings periods. And that is during those dates. So well, that's next year in September. That's why I verbally committed. Yes. I verbally committed because it's in September and I can go in that month. So that's my plan. Nice. Well, but I know I'll see you. Like which economy do you go? To? Oh, always. Well, so I'll see you there. Economy for sure. for sure. And then maybe another camp by next year. Do you have yeah. ones that you go to every year without fail? Well, Colorado is so easy. Yeah. And I like to be in our area at that time of the year. So because it's so beautiful. Yeah. I love Colorado. Yeah, Colorado's in summer are just great. I, at the 
bare minimum, you will see me at Economy next year, and you will probably see me at Campfire Rocky Mountain Week One again. Awesome. And Week One is like. Oh, and then Bali too. Yes. We three three meetups in yes. 2025. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't wait until our paths cross again. Yay. And I love catching up a year later and hearing everyone's travels. Last night with Samantha and Chris, I was like, wow, you did all that just since we met a year ago? That's mm -hmm. just crazy. So I'm and excited just to hear what the travels though, year. but also just like all the things and the changes yeah. people have been inspired to make in their lives. Well, how I mean, people grow yes. and change and in good ways. I would have never in a million years thought I would be having this early retire date and already part time at this age. If if it wasn't for this community, I definitely wouldn't be in this place. And so do you have any advice? So some of the people in my community are very young and just starting out. Do you have any advice for them on how to maybe design their best life going forward? First, I would say I'm incredibly jealous that you found this when you were younger. I wish I would have found it when I was younger. I would say if you're already, already on the path and, and doing the things, you're so far ahead of everybody else. And just keep plugging away. I mean, if they're part of the community, then they, they know what to do, right? Just keep plugging away. And I would definitely encourage people to maybe try to get to at least one in-person event a year because it really is life-changing. I know that sounds so cliche, but we saw it here this weekend with all of these new people who came in, and I think they all thought we would just be talking about money the whole time. Yeah. And, and while there is that, you also find that you have so much in common with these people and you're making these incredible relationships. And Diana Merriam says something that, that really resonates with me. And she's like, five is better with friends. Yeah, I love um, that quote. Yeah. She's founded the Economy Conference, if you, if you don't know Diana. But um, what's the point of being five if you don't have anybody to hang out with, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why this community is so important to me and why I continue going to these things and developing these relationships so that I have people to travel with and spend time with and visit. And if somebody in this community says, hey, when you're coming through Colorado, hit me up and you can come stay with me, they're not blowing smoke. Like they're yeah. being for real. Oh yeah. They yeah, so if you it. open your door to somebody, expect yes. them to show up. <laughs> yes, but I love that. It's amazing. I have to give an example. Just two weeks ago, somebody I met at my very first Camp Fi, who lives in Seattle, messaged me and said, hey, I'm going to be coming through St. Louis. I'm speaking at this conference. I was like, awesome. Let's get together. And that turned into like four or five people yeah, in the so community. Emma was there. Yes. Right? Yeah. People who lived within about like four hours all started driving into St. Louis <laughs> and it turned into this like two day five party. Yeah. It was the best thing ever. And stuff like that happens in this community. Awesome. And it's, that doesn't, I don't feel like that happens in the real world. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And, and, and it's almost like, I feel like everyone feels like they're family. Yes. But it's not like... Um, just these cursory, you know, relationships. It's deep conversations, it deep relationships, and I love it so much. It brings me such joy. And I, you know, there was a few people joking when they got here. They were like, "Yeah, my it's my first time." My friends were like, "Oh my gosh, don't go to that. They're going to try to sell you life insurance." And <laughs> it's just so silly. And then they find the first, even the first night as we were going around doing introductions, people were saying, "Oh my gosh, it's so amazing already!" Like. I've already found all these other things I have in common with people. We're not even talking about money. And I'm like, right. yes, right. yes, that's what happened. Yeah. So go to an in-person event. And even mm -hmm. if it's just your local, maybe choose FI meetup. Maybe yeah, start there. Maybe have plenty of people coming to yours. In right? St. Louis, so right? Like and then and then maybe eventually do one of these camps or economy if you're close mm -hmm. to that. But it's it's really life-changing. It is. It just is. I, again, I know that just sounds so out there, but... You'll know. You'll get it. If yeah. you go, you will get it. I have. I, I can't even recall anyone I've spoken to that said, yeah, that just wasn't good. Right? You know, Ever. I, yeah. yeah. It's just strange. I don't know. It just it seems like I, maybe it's the self-selection process. You've already got some commonality with people in some way that you come. And it's just I'm always amazed every time because initially I was like, oh, that was a really good event. And a lot of people clicked. And. Maybe that was just this event, but it's like literally I've been to 12 of these and it's every single time. And here at this one, we ended up with so many new people who'd never been before. And they pretty much all had the same like, bottom line about their experience, yeah. about it being about developing the relationships, finding so many commonalities, not money related, and just being very surprised by that and feeling like several people said it like, these are my people. This is my tribe. Oh my gosh. I never expected to find this. That was my experience in 2022 and why I keep showing up. And how was it being? So Stephen wasn't here this weekend. Oh, the first event. Yeah. 
And uh, we had John, yourself, and Eric as the host. How did that go? Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. Yeah, like I had told Stephen in the past that once I went part-time, I wanted to start coming to more camps and if I could ever help him out. So when I heard that he wasn't going to be at this one, I just reached out and was like, hey, let me know if I can help. So he let me do the introductions on the first night. He let me do the speaker introductions because, I mean, public speaking, right? That's my job. So that would come very easy for me. And last night I ran karaoke, which was sort of interesting. But, oh, yeah, I love that stuff. I mean, I I don't know what else to say. It it puts me in a position of probably meeting more of the people than I would have otherwise, too, which really is really great. That's why I love helping out at check-in. Right. Because it's just like you get to see all the people and you get to hand the name tag. So you start to, like, learn the names a little bit. And if we're being honest, I mean, my personality type is I just kind of like, you know, again, I'm a planner. I'm kind of the one Mm. that tends to take over and take charge. It's kind of just my personality, for better or worse. So... I loved it. Steven, if you're listening, thanks for letting me do that. If you uh, want me to do it again, I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think John's uh, take is on it? I haven't talked to him about it. I haven't either. Because yeah. he did it. He was an awesome No, he was great. Leader for he sure. has a big, booming voice, which is really helpful yes. in, in a crew of 114, which yeah. is, by the way, the largest camp I ever by a yeah. lot. Yeah. I, when he told me how many people are coming, I'm like, what? Crazy. And, and then he sent me the list, and I'm looking over the list, and I'm like, Normally, I know half the people, and I, I was like, I don't know a lot of these people. This is going to be an event with a lot of new a people. A lot of new people, and it was incredible. A lot yeah. of new, really wonderful relationships have been made. Any ideas on how many of these people found it? I mean, I have some thoughts on my own about how people found it, but it just, did you talk to people, on, the new people, and find out? A little like, bit. There's a lot of people who've been lurking on the sidelines for a while, yeah. who've been in the community but just haven't been to any events. And maybe they were getting close to their five dates. So they're like, well, okay. let me just go check this out. Or there were a lot of people who kind of got recruited. They had friends who oh, said, hey, okay. yeah. you should check this out. I know Kevin Carter, I think, on seven. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So there was a lot of that. I had the craziest coincidence. Um, oh, right. Yeah, I, I have to share that. that. Yeah. Um, you know, we were all on Facebook together and Stephen has us go in and basically say, I'm attending. So you can, that's what you did, right? You went and looked on Facebook, which of my Facebook friends are going to be at camp, right? And there was like seven. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know any of these people. Wait, Sean, hold up. Okay, so this guy, Sean, I knew in Louisville, Kentucky, I mean, 20 years ago, had no clue he was part of this community, knew anything about this community. But I knew him through my friend Eric, who I also knew in mobile, right? Mm-hmm. So I immediately reached out to Eric. Hey, are you bringing Sean to this event? He's like, I haven't talked to Sean in 20 years. I'm like, oh my gosh. It was a complete coincidence. <laughs> he had no idea we were a part of this community. We had no idea he was a part. He's been following all this stuff for years. He's just never, ever gone to any in-person events. Mm-hmm. And this is the one he decided to go to. And here we are, like, hosting the thing. Yeah. It's incredible. How incredible was it coincidence. catching up with somebody from 20 years prior? It was great. And... And it was like no time had passed. Really? I mean, you just saw him having everybody having so much fun together this weekend. But he, this is his very first in person. He's never been to anything, uh-huh. like even a local meetup. Uh-huh. And he said the same thing we've been saying here. Like, oh my gosh, I found my people. Yeah. Like, this is the best thing ever. All my friends thought I was going to come here and somebody was going to try to sell me something. He's yeah. like, I was absolutely, I didn't think it was going to be bad. Like, I thought I'd enjoy myself, but I never had any idea I would love it this much. Like, I don't want to go home. Yeah, that's great. That seems to be a common thing mm-hmm. here, for sure. And it helps that you were part of the organization of it, and I think that raised the level even more. So I hope, I, hope I get that. to do more of that. It was really it was really fun. Yeah. And so, if people would like to see what you do as a career, can uh, people actually go and see yeah. the channel online or anything? Yeah, like I mean, you, KMOV are the call letters. It's okay. the CBS affiliate in St. Louis. So you okay. can just Google KMOV. You can live stream our stuff. Uh-huh. Professionally on the air, I'm Kristen Cornett, C O R N E T T. That's my maiden name, and I just okay. have to professionally. Mm-hmm. If you Google me, like so much stuff comes up. Yeah. There's so many clips. Well, we got to check it out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I also, you'll see a lot of stuff if you do look that up. I was adopted in 2019. I found like my whole biological family through a DNA kit. So you'll see a lot of that stuff on there. Right, because um, you did a, they did a, a, a episode on the, on the show, right? Earn and Invest. Um, oh yeah, we did. Well, Earn and Invest, Doc G did a right. whole um, episode about right. it. And then I also did um, some TV news stories about it. That, it wasn't my intention. What happened was 
I got an email a day that I was at work that I had this sister that I didn't even know existed. And one of the reporters had the wherewithal to say to me, hey, can I interview about this right now? Because I was super emotional. She goes, we don't ever have to use this. We don't ever yeah. have to use it, but let's just talk about it. Mm -hmm. And maybe we decide to use it. Yeah. And then we did. And it was never supposed to be a series, <laughs> but I found one sister and that turned into finding another sister and that turned into finding Crazy. a dad and two brothers and it became this whole thing. Wow. So you'll see some of that align and yeah, I'm, for better or for worse, I'm all over the internet. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll put some links in the show notes. Yeah. yeah. And if you're coming through St. Louis, reach out. Okay. Is there a way that people can reach you? If, if you'd What's like? the best way? Gosh. Yeah. Email me at kristen.cornett. So that's K-R-I-S-T-E-N dot C-O-R-N-E-T-T -T at K-M-O-V dot com. That's the awesome. easiest way. Yeah. And of course, you want to hear about your new travel company when it gets up and running. I don't know that I'm going to, I don't know that I'm ever going to like make a company. Well, organization, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Adventures, well, I'm just, you yeah. You definitely want to. And I appreciate on. that you're going to hold me to that. That's something I've got to get moving on in the next year. Yeah, and it can be just a one time thing and see how it goes. And if it's fun, then keep doing it. It makes all the sense in the world for yeah. me today. Because that, that's how the FinTalks cruise came out. We're like, oh, we should go on a cruise. We, initially, it was going to be. Let's get 10 rooms and see if we can fill them. All of a sudden, it's like... All of a sudden, it's 60 people, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So watch out. <laughs> it's, it's very clear that there is the, the desire for these mm -hmm. things, right? Yeah. So I, I feel pretty confident that I would be able... And, and I'm talking small group travel, so yeah, I don't yeah. think it's going to be a problem. To How many people are you thinking would be in your group? Not more than 25, probably even less. I mean, if it's land-based... Yeah. I mean, I don't know that we want to be in a big general no, bus. You want a van or something. Yeah, you want a yeah. smaller group for that kind of stuff. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Stay tuned. Yes. Any ideas on where you might want to do that to initial? You mentioned Morocco. But that one's really high on my list. Yeah, but that may not. You might want. Do you want to do that more extreme one? I don't want to say extreme, but you know. I know what you mean. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to need to do well, some research. Well, we got to do the Spain one to do some research, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. research. <laughs> I need to look into some of these travel companies and see which one makes the most sense for small group travel for kind of what we're looking at doing. Yeah. And then see what kind of things they offer. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely curious to hear about the Rick Steves uh, adventure. Oh, my gosh. We're so excited. Yeah. I'm so excited. Well, have fun on that. Thank you. And thanks for joining me. Oh, my gosh. So much fun. Thank you for listening to this week's show. Please click follow on your favorite podcast player or subscribe on YouTube to ensure you don't miss any future episodes. Also, please leave a rating and review for the show. This helps improve the ranking and enables other like-minded people find the content in their podcast players. If you would like me to answer a question on the show, please send it to mark at marksmoneymind.com and put podcast question in the subject line. Let me know your first name, or let me know if you would like to remain anonymous, and also your state of residence if you choose. I would also appreciate it if you would recommend this show to friends and family that might benefit from this content. See you next week on the Mark's Money Mind Show. Until then, make some, save and invest, live on the rest. And now for the all-important disclaimer. This show is for education and entertainment purposes only and should not be considered investment, tax, or legal advice. Please consult the appropriate advisor or advisors before implementing anything you hear on this show or any other show for that matter. While I fully intend for everything on this show to be true and accurate at the time of each recording, occasionally errors may occur. So please do your own due diligence on anything discussed.